Hello all, a quick update today to just maybe ground people in having a grasp of all cause mortality and impacts from our current issue. Uh, I'm increasingly seeing that many reports and media are losing track really of the overall impacts, the trends and what's actually happening. So I just thought I'd give an overview from Euromomo. Now this is a funny name, but uh, it's 20 European major countries and it's the tracking for many, many years of all-cause mortality across the whole year on a weekly basis. So you get the trends of mortality or excess mortality when it's observed, like in flu seasons, and you get to see the history and kind of what the cadence of mortality is. So hopefully you'll find this uh, kind of useful and, and informative. So anyway, we're looking at all-cause mortality and that's really important because we've got infection fatality rates, case fatality rates and loads of different measures depending on tests that are done or not done and they can be quite confusing. So I'll just give an overview of what the actual impacts are here today. So here's the data I just put in Excel from Euromomo. And basically, you can see there, I've put the approximate uh, populations of all of these countries that are tracked in Euromomo. And we've also taken the actual deaths today count from Worldometer, right? So they're completely up to date, May 9th, actual recorded deaths per country. So basically, you can divide, of course, the number of deaths for a given country by the approximate population and you get the deaths per million, which is often uh, quoted. And of course, when I do that calculation, they match up with Worldometer uh, because it's simple calculation. But where it gets kind of interesting is when you actually look at the excess death rate from uh, Corona. And here we can simply divide the total deaths for these 20 countries by the total population. And we see that there's currently a 0.033% uh, death rate from Corona. Okay, and we'll look back at 2018 to see the excess deaths in that year during the flu season. Uh, and we'll see that it's 0.041% approximately. So at an all-cause death level for excess deaths in the winter season, currently Corona is getting close already to the whole season in 18. So again, people may not have a feel for these figures, so you can see them here. And I'll explain. So there's my little Excel uh, calculation. It's straightforward enough. And I'm going to show now the Euromomo actual uh, data. So here you can see 15 to 64 years and 65 plus years. Now, this covers all the excess death because below 15 years old, there's, there's really nothing in any year. So we can see here 2018, and it's not too complex a calculation. You look at the normal baseline in the background, that's the blue dotted line, and you add up each week of excess death. Right. So for this age bracket off the Y axis, you add up around 20,000 extra deaths in 2018 for this age bracket and similarly around 140,000 extra deaths across Europe in the winter season for this age group here. So approximately for the 2018 winter season across 20 countries of Europe, and I think that's approximately 430 something million people, we've got 160,000 extra excess fatalities in the winter season, which is around 0.041%. Now, for this year, with obviously our current challenge, um, you can't really add up under the curve because it's emerging data. So it's much better to take the figure I told you a moment ago, the total of 145,077 deaths. That's the total deaths for these uh, 20 countries from Worldometer. And we see dividing by the same population for the 20 countries, it's 0.033%. So this is the actual percentage fatality rate across uh, these countries in Europe. And it's a little less than the total that was experienced in the season in 18 at the moment. But keep in mind that's just today. And obviously we have a ways to go uh, in the coming month or two before we actually get into the summer. Uh, and we don't know how many more deaths there will be for sure. But we look at that briefly, again, keeping in mind this is all from 
Euromomo all-cause mortality and from the current official quoted figures for corona. So just keep that in mind. These are not projections or models. These are actuals. But we can look at, say, Italy and Spain. And here's the deaths for Italy and Spain. And you can see that they're quite late in their cycle because they started earlier. And you can see that overall the area under the curve is obviously a lot of tragic deaths, but they're coming down markedly. And one can maybe expect coming into summer that they'll keep coming down, which follows a relatively normal virus pattern. So maybe not too many more deaths yet to come, hopefully, from looking at the curves. And other countries in Europe are earlier, so they're maybe up here in their curve and they're going to maybe double their deaths or you know we're not sure but we can just try and take a shot at that so i'll show you visually here then that basically the 2018 flu season here were the normally expected deaths out across europe for the whole season actually these are just deaths that occur anyway around a million deaths for this 18 weeks or 19 weeks and we'll look at 2020 corona uh, where we're being impacted. So there's 160,000 extra deaths in the flu season 2018 over and above the, the normal death rate that occurs. Uh, so we've got that 160,000. And we know from Worldometer that so far in this uh, flu season, but it's really mainly Corona, we count all the Corona deaths, are 145,077. So we can see visually that these excess deaths so far are not quite as many as 18. And if we look just at maybe if they double, hopefully not, or two and a half times maybe in total in the coming month or two, you know, it certainly will be that Corona is, is quite a lot more severe than 2018. And also it's concentrated. So 2018 was a hump over 18 weeks, Whereas we're seeing Corona kind of somewhat more concentrated um, behavior of the virus. And that may relate as well to distancing lockdown, may change the tempo. So, but that's the compare that may happen in the coming month or two. They're the kind of differences we may actually see, but we can't tell for sure. So looking at the whole year of 2018, we've got the same excess deaths from the flu season there, but just looking at all deaths that occur normally in a normal year. And for 2020, we don't know yet, but we're showing the same as 18. And again, we've got Corona adding obviously quite a lot here, as we can see. And if Corona over the next couple of months as the curves come down, uh, ends up being you know, double what we currently have or two and a half times, that'll be the impact uh, of 2020 versus 2018. So, you know, there may be a recurrence in the winter, like often happens, or, well, coronaviruses, usually they're a winter phenomenon in, historically. Um, so we don't know, maybe this will be higher because of a winter resurgence. We'll have to wait and see. So hopefully that gives an idea, a, a big picture view of the actual impact currently so far and uh, the potential impact uh, as this thing transpires over the next month or two and maybe brings a little perspective to it for you. Oh, and one last thing, as I always mention, uh, our film Extra Time, which is at extratimemovie.com, you know, data analysis, interviews, talks, presentations, all that work that goes out for free. Uh, we do need support, so please share extratimemovie.com because this will pass and there will be vastly more deaths from heart disease, cancers, uh, Alzheimer's disease, and all these modern chronic diseases uh, will absolutely, you know, they will tower over uh, this current challenging situation, bad as it is, uh, over the long term, and they're not getting addressed. So Extra Time Movie, we, we show you how to address them, how to stop and even reverse heart disease, which should be of great interest to most people. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen and go to extratimemovie.com to see our fascinating new documentary on stopping and reversing heart disease.